Hello and welcome to another video. Today's custom budget PC is fitted into this mysterious looking PC case. If you thought it was the NZXT Phantom PC case from days past, I wouldn't blame you. It's actually created by a company called DIY PC. And it looks like they did a version of that old Bit Phoenix case too. A lot of their cases draw on other brand designs, but it works and the price is right. I actually have one of the NZXT Phantom cases back here in a state of disrepair. I'm not really too sure what to do with it. This case features a nice air intake grill with a static blue 120mm air intake fan and a static blue 120mm air exhaust fan. Both fans came pre-installed and they are rather nostalgic where the color choice is dependent on which fan that you choose to install. Blue looks nice with this color scheme though. Despite the older style, I think this PC case looks pretty sharp. Even this older style plastic side window looks a lot less awkward than it did with PC cases from days past. And part of this is because there's actually some routing for cable management in the back of this PC case. I do have to say it looks really clean though. On the top I.O. we have 2x USB 2.0 microphone and headphone jacks and 1x USB 3.0. Up here we have mounting for an extra case fan or just some passive air exhaust. Panel off, we can take a better look at the hardware inside. Underneath this Thermal Red Assassin Spirit V2 CPU cooler, there's a Ryzen 5 5600 with 6 cores and 12 threads. Beside that is 16GB of Timetech Pinnacle Conduit 3600MHz DDR4 RAM. And this would be the Zotac RTX 3060 AMP White Edition graphics card with 12GB of GDDR6 memory, which features a slight boost in clock speeds. The white casing perfectly matches this PC case. The motherboard of choice is a budget focus Azeroc B550M-HDV. No ferals, no gimmicks, but does the job. And underneath the graphics card, Windows 11 Pro is installed onto a 1TB 2242 Timetech NVMe solid state drive. It's one of these tiny little SSDs that I accidentally ordered but fortunately still have a use for, and it's running at PCIe 3 times 4 speeds. For some extra storage space, I threw in this free Seagate Barracuda hard drive with 160GB in capacity. And powering it all is this Corsair CX650M 650W modular power supply. For extra air cooling, you could install one more 120mm case fan up front. And here's a look at the inside of the top where you can mount another fan, or maybe one of those small 120mm radiators. You'll see in the gameplay coming up that this actually was enough cooling for the system, and temperatures remained very stable. Of course it doesn't hurt that it's cold winter here, but we are indoors with the heat on. The rear I.O. of the motherboard features a mouse and keyboard PS2 port, 2x USB 2.0, some display options that we can't fully utilize with the 5600 CPU, as there's no integrated graphics, 4x USB 3.2 Gen 1, RJ45 Ethernet port, audio jacks, and the 3060 features 1x HDMI 2.1 and 3x DisplayPort 1.4a. Now let's check out the video encoding and video render tests. I have DaVinci Resolve 19 loaded up with my usual 11 minutes of raw 1080p footage. And we're looking to see what the render time looks like for this combination of hardware. So let's check it out. And we finished in 2 minutes and 27 seconds. So that's 26 seconds faster than the Ryzen 5 5600X tested with the RX 6800 and 4 seconds faster than the 3700X paired with a RTX 3070. That's pretty interesting that the 5600 and 3060 combo is the fastest time standing since I started recording all my results. I didn't expect it to have an edge over the 5600X, but uh, what do I know? I'm just collecting data as for knowledge while I'm getting there. Handbrake is loaded up with 11 minutes of 1080p gaming footage. I set the preset at Creator 1080p60 and we're just going to be checking out raw CPU power for this one. So let's see how long this one takes. And we're finishing up in 3 minutes and 7 seconds. And that's just a 3 second difference compared to the 5600X that I last tested. And an 18 second difference with the current leader, the Ryzen 7 3700X. Now we'll see how fast the 3060 is able to encode the video. And this one took 47 seconds. 47 seconds puts the RTX 3060 in first place. 
My data collection set is pretty small right now, but I'm really impressed. Maybe that 12 gigabytes of VRAM is coming in handy with video encoding. It's interesting that it beat out the RX 6800, which has 16 gigabytes of VRAM by three seconds. And it beat out the other leader by two seconds, which was the 3070 Ti. Interesting results. Before we get on to the gameplay, I just wanted to point out that in the BIOS, I do have resizable bar enabled. And we have the RAM running at the applicable speeds from the manufacturer, 3600 megahertz. I don't spend too much time tinkering with little things in the BIOS and in Windows for PCs that I'm going to sell. I do tell the customer what I've done and whether or not they'd like to change it and if they'd like some help with that. So I think we'll check out the gaming performance now. Thanks a lot for checking out my video. If you're using this hardware in 2024, definitely let me know. I'd love to hear how it's going for you. I could definitely see myself using this combo and this PC case, which I've kind of come to really like. Maybe I'll build something for myself in the same case. So that's enough talk from me. I hope you have a great day.